Hello and welcome to this market special from Business Today. I'm Udayan Mukherjee. With me is Abha Bakaya, and our special market guest for today is Sunil Sankhania, founder of Abacus Asset Management. Sunil, it's great to see you again. Uh, I mean, before we talk about the markets, I mean, any discussion this week has to start with uh, thoughts on Rakesh. Uh, how I mean, you've known him for many years, I'm sure. How, how will you remember him? Uh, thanks, uh, Udayan and Abha, for having me. So obviously, you know, it's uh, it's uh, not been a great last uh, week. Uh, you know, uh, Rakesh Bhaiya, as we all lovingly used to call him, has been a guide, mentor. I would say he has been uh, one person who's always been instrumental in uh, thinking long term as far as India is concerned. And right from being a very young professional uh, till the time, uh, you know, Bhaiya was with us, I think he was always there to guide in his own style and uh, with very, very honest views. So there's a, there is a huge void and I always say that, you know, Bhaiya is not there, but his teachings and his words and his uh, umpteenth videos are always there to guide us. And it's all upon us to ensure that we take forward his legacy of being positive on India and ensuring the country, you know, does well, uh, not only economically, but also as far as the financial markets are concerned. Sure. Uh, on the market, Sunil, uh, now, uh, you know, in August, we've seen some kind of selling from uh, domestic investors. Uh, do you think this is just profit taking after such a strong rally or uh, would you read anything more, more to it? I mean, what have you done as a fund manager yourself after such a powerful rally over the last one month or so? So, you know, uh, if you actually just uh, look back a little bit, you know, uh, this year started uh, with a lot of uncertainties. You had uh, the Ukraine and the Russia issue in February. And just about when the markets were settling in, uh, you had uh, two very sharp interest rate hikes of 75 basis points in the US. It's not that, uh, uh, you know, the markets were not expecting interest rate hikes, but, uh, you know, the, the aggressive stance of Fed, uh, not only in the U.S., but also central banks all over the world, obviously it took uh, markets uh, a little bit by surprise. And we had a, a huge uh, uh, reaction in the markets in uh, May as well as uh, the first half of June. But, you know, I always say this and we firmly believe as a company that what used to normally happen in two years is nowadays happening in two, three months. So, you know, the scare of inflation and the interest rate hikes, which normally would have taken one and a half, two years, sort of got discounted in the markets in like two, three months. And, you know, by the end of June, you had all the commodities start to react very sharply. You had oil, which had touched 135, 140, come decisively around 90. And I think that was when the markets sort of started to get a whiff that maybe, you know, uh, they were building in too much of an interest rate hike and uh, also inflation might not be as much sticky as, as markets were uh, expected to be. And, you know, you had the rally of, I would say, most uh, uh, not hated, but uh, uh, most unpredictable rally of sort where the Nifty went up by like 2500 points in a matter of two months. One interesting aspect of this rally has been that generally local investors have stayed away from this rally and it's been predominantly led uh, by global investors who were either uh, underinvested or in fact hedge funds who had also shorted uh, equity in general and uh, in inequities in particular. Uh, and to that extent, I would say the correction uh, from a rapid fall uh, to a semblance as far as the markets are concerned has already happened. In fact, uh, we would be in the camp which were to believe that Nifty would be more or less, you know, in the in the range of like 16,800 to 17,400, at least for the next couple of months, uh, before we decisively start to see stabilization as far as uh, the US dollar is concerned and uh, uh, ensuingly uh, the commodities. I think what, again, as I repeat, you know, what was happening in two years is now happening in two, three months. So dollar index has again sort of become a cause of worry. We have already seen, I think euro is almost at par to the dollar, which is after years and years of uh, that happening. And there is a mild sort of a risk off. So at this point of time, you know, I think the domestic investors uh, uh, did not participate in, in the true sense in the last two months, particularly on the HNI side. And there has been uh, some, uh, uh, I would say, tactical takeoff as far as a uh, money is concerned. From our side, uh, we have been cautious investors. 
and to some extent we would have said you know we would have underperformed in this rally because we did not want to play the momentum but investors continue to be positive and the flows have been pretty decent even in this rally though our deployment has been much slower than it was maybe 2 3 months back uh you made an interesting point sunil you said the range would be 16800 to 17400 uh, that means that uh, you don't see the market going back anywhere close to the bottom that we made in uh, earlier in the year of close to 15000 you think that low is in place for the rest of this year see again you know this forecasts are always made to be proven wrong uh, so i would just add that disclaimer having said that i think hmm. a few things are working as far as india is concerned Uh, we have had a great uh, uh, normal monsoon again and the past 3 monsoons have ensured that farm produce as well as the farm prices have been pretty decent so farm income has been pretty robust and even from the urban side particularly on the technology as well as on the financial market side i think jobs as well as the salary increases have been decent so despite a grassroots level impact of inflation i think it has got negated by Uh, almost you know an equal or more as far as earnings uh, growth uh, sorry income growth is concerned the other thing is after 3 years we are heading into a normal festive season you know since 2019 i think 22 would be the first year where we would celebrate ganpati and durga puja and navratri and dasara and diwali in the true indian fervor you know and i think uh, that indication of uh, huge uh, or decent demand as far as uh you know most of the consumption uh, products are concerned is uh, pretty much visible on top of it uh, i there is a little bit of uh, relaxation as far as i was as i was saying you know commodity prices are concerned and the headwinds which were facing in terms of margin would start to sort of ease off as far as september is concerned uh and that is the reason we believe that at on any dips you will have uh, you know opportunities which will come in having said that uh, within the world is uh, very uncertain you know uh, you not only have the russia ukraine issue but you know you have the new china taiwan dragging hanging sword currency i was mentioning to you you know particularly the dollar index is moving uh, uh, you know like a yo yo you know 3 4% in a month is like unheard of as far as the dollar index is concerned but which we are seeing every month and to that extent volatility is going to be the order of the day but given the strong earning season uh, which is expected based on the strong festive season which we are heading into and also the fact that income levels both in rural as well as urban india has been pretty decent i think that should bode well for india and last but not the least because of the problems of uh, gas and power and costs which uh, the euro region is particularly facing and also the fact that you know china obviously is one country uh, which the world fears can do something which russia did i think india is uh, uh, if if india does play its card well india can benefit in terms of exports and we are already seeing that in a lot of sectors particularly you know on the engineering side and a lot of our traditional exports so there are there are a lot of uh, i would say positives the only only thing is uh, you know we are not cheap you know we are not expensive but we are not cheap so we'll have to keep that in mind and that is the reason where where we believe that the next maybe a couple of months you know we should be in that range okay so where are you finding value right now sunil um, there's a little bit of mid cap it perhaps engineering uh, construction what are some of the pockets that you're finding value in currently <laughs> unfortunately where we are finding value the stocks are not moving um but uh, you know i think uh, financials continue to be a good sector we have seen massive clean up last 5 6 years uh the only thing is we have seen a decent rally last couple of months and financials have uh, led that rally you know almost all the banks are up 20 25% but whenever you get an opportunity i think the larger banks look pretty pretty decent and select nbfcs are also looking decent uh it has not performed uh, obviously there are reasons uh, there is a fear of slowdown globally at least on the on the company wise uh, uh, you know interaction we don't uh, see that to be a worry and uh, i think at some point of time it uh, it would get well uh, in terms of uh, returns and it's underperformed for a long time so maybe that can be uh, sort of a dark horse but i think the bigger play would be from some of the companies and sectors which will benefit from the demand uh, which i mentioned to you should uh, come in in the in the festive season 
you know so whether it is uh, you know uh, garments or shoes or a lot of other uh, building materials the only problem is this has been the sector which has run up also very very fast so as i said you know where there is value uh, stocks have not moved and where there is no uh, sort of where there is uh, optimism the stocks have already already uh, moved up quite significantly but uh, on reactions i think these would be some of the plays uh, where there is an opportunity uh, i mentioned to you earlier about uh, the export opportunity particularly in line with uh, the power costs moving up in in uh, euro as well as uh, uh, the china issue i think that segment which is on the engineering side should benefit from the export opportunity and uh, because capex is coming back i think there will be an incremental demand there even from the domestic side so that is again one sector which is expensive uh, but on on uh, opportunities i think that would be one sector where we would be looking at uh, very eagerly i wanted to ask you particularly about this uh, capex opportunity uh, sunil da uh, do you have uh, enough confidence that this time the capex cycle will play out for the next few years after after a long hiatus and Uh, what kind of clusters are you most bullish on in the in the whole capex range or the capex basket i mean do you find any pockets of value there which haven't run up i mean which ones would you zone in on if you had to play that theme so then actually if you see you know uh, what happened was last 5 6 years none of the companies and sectors uh, did any major capex you know because uh, obviously the balance sheets were not great banks were not in a position to lend and the confidence also was not there Uh, but the last two years, the demand growth has has meant that most of the companies, you know, have been operating at close to full capacity, and that is the reason why uh, last year a lot of companies announced capex. Uh, unfortunately, in between, all the metal prices and commodity prices shot up, so the outlay on capex for each company uh, was at least thirty forty percent more than what they had envisaged, and therefore a lot of companies deferred it. Uh, thankfully now again you know you are uh, you are seeing some semblance uh, and capex costs have come back to reasonable levels and now you are seeing companies whether it is on the on the power side uh, including renewable as well as the traditional power you are seeing that happening even on on the core uh, industry side whether it is steel or metal uh, chemical space so across the board you know companies are expanding and the beneficiaries obviously would be the providers of uh, you know capital goods to this segment Uh, uh just a disclaimer stocks are not cheap and they have moved up further if you look at the last uh, one month uh, one and a half months uh, the bigger gainers uh, on the equity markets would be capital good companies uh and therefore as i say you know on reaction you should look at it but the only thing which works for them is the huge operating leverage you know gross margins for a lot of these companies are in the region of 50 55% and therefore you know there is huge operating leverage the sales go up by 30 40% uh the profits in fact double or triple also uh and that is one segment we are looking at on the other hand you also have government capex which is moving up in gesto you know so you look at the state governments across the board state governments are talking about uh, roads and airports and so on and so forth uh the only problem there is companies which are beneficiaries of this are epc companies and because of the past history of epc companies having issues with balance sheet you don't get those kind of valuations but even within that space i think we have exposure to two three epc companies where we believe that the return on equity are like upwards of 17 18% uh, you know so we're taking the bet but you can't put a big chunk of your of your uh, you know uh, 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 sort of portfolio into these companies uh, because of their past uh, but uh, capital wood companies definitely you know uh, uh, worth a look and they will benefit both from the export opportunity as well as the operating leverage which will come into play when uh, this capex uh, goes into fruition let me talk about a different sector sunil which has been in the limelight over the last one month i mean there's been a lot of chatter about the collapse in the zomato price uh, and a subsequent pullback and then fall again and also in uh, other peer group company peer companies like uh, say the policy bazaar pv fintech where uh, the promoter sold some shares and the stock took a big dive i mean after such a big correction have you found as an investor any value in any of these new age digital stocks so one is first of all in you know, a hats off to all these entrepreneurs for having created businesses which did not exist for uh, you know getting india so much of uh, investments from global investors and for creating 
uh, lakhs and lakhs of uh, employment opportunities. Having said that, I think these businesses by nature are very, very long gestation businesses. They need capital continuously uh, because, you know, they have still not reached a stage where they can claim or they can present, uh, you know, free cash flows uh, on a consistent basis. And, you know, on the listed space, uh, at least our view is that such businesses uh, uh, would find it very difficult. You know, when you are on a, on a private space, uh, it is uh, easier for such businesses to raise capital uh, rather than when they are on the listed space because listed investors tend to be very different. Listed investors, though they claim to be long term investors, sometimes take calls based on one month, three months, six months. And also, you know, you, once you get on the listed space, then EBITDA and uh, PAT and P becomes more uh, prevalent than all the other matrices. Uh, the fact that they have fallen 50, 60, 70 percent in itself should not be the only reason for an investor to look at that. Maybe the IPO price was not right or maybe the current price is not right. I don't know. But from our perspective, we believe in investing in companies which make profits, where there is sustainable profit growth. And where what we are paying today will be more than compensated by way of future profitability. And unfortunately, none of these companies uh, qualify in that. So we are staying away from them. I heard you talk about the dollar index earlier, uh, Sunil. Uh, do you worry that, you know, with the rally that we saw in the last couple of months, as you said, driven primarily by the return of FIIs, that might begin to slow down once again as risk off creeps in? Because again, people are talking about more aggressive rate hikes after looking at the minutes of the Fed meeting. Uh, do you worry that that period of risk on which led to this 2500 point Nifty rally, that might be slowly on the wane, might be coming to an end? So one is, uh, yes, dollar index just play a big role uh, because what typically happens is when the dollar is appreciating, it makes sense for investors to pull out money everywhere else and put it in the US because you end up making 3-4% only by way of currency and the reverse is the true. So when dollar starts to weaken a little bit, you know, you have a risk on coming in. But risk on and risk off don't change uh, so frequently. And at least our view is talking to investors and prospective investors, even in our funds from overseas. Uh, I think uh, uh, two, three things have happened. One is a lot of funds are under invested or underweight India uh, because of the huge uh, outflow over the last two, three years. Second is there is again a realization which is creeping in and which is creeping in after maybe 15 years that, you know, emerging market and an asset class has done nothing. You know, the returns from emerging market funds is almost zero over the last decade. Whereas uh, countries like India, you know, even in the last uh, decade when uh, the emerging markets have done nothing, India in dollar terms is up some 115, 20%. So there is a slight, uh, I would say, indication of return to country specific funds, which should be very positive as far as India is concerned. Having said that, I definitely do believe that this uh, six, seven billion dollars, which we have seen in August is not going to be like a every month issue. Uh, it has to come back to reasonable levels, but I would still be in the camp, which will believe that every year India would receive net inflows, not only in FDI, but even on from the FPI perspective. The market moment does uh, benefit from flows. There is absolutely no doubt about it. But I think we have seen that uh, domestic investors have uh, uh, more than enough uh, financial muscle power to counter any selling by foreigners as long as the fundamentals look pretty robust. Uh, so uh, FI flows should slow down a little bit, but uh, they should still remain positive. That would be our view. Sunil, so always a pleasure hearing your thoughts. Uh, thank you very much for taking time out today. Thank you. Thanks, Sudhian. Thanks, Ava. If you like the video, do like, comment, share, and subscribe.